Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Clark and welcome to Thailand Unplugged. Let's have a quick look at some of the latest news coming up today. A video of mainland Chinese police tackling a 12-year-old Hong Kong girl to the ground in Hong Kong has caused outrage around the world. Indonesian police detained dozens in a raid on a Jakarta gay party. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, China calls for a code of conduct in the South China Sea with Asian countries. Gotta admit, the Chinese Communist Party does say some funny things sometimes. Hello once again, I'm Stephen Clark, bringing you the latest news from Southeast Asia and the wonderful land of smiles, Thailand. Those stories and a few others coming right up. Video of a 12-year-old girl tackled by Hong Kong police sparks an outrage. The mother of a girl body slammed by police say she was only shopping for stationery. Hmm. Video footage of the 12-year-old girl being body slammed to the ground by Hong Kong police has prompted an outrage across social media. Video shared by the Hong Kong Free Press and activists shows a young girl of school age attempted to run away from police who cornered her during a pro-democracy protest as she tried to escape. An officer was seen charging into her and violently knocking her to the ground before four other officers rushed in to pin her down. Despite the public outrage over the incident, the Hong Kong police defend their actions in a statement Sunday night and said the girl had fled in a suspicious manner. They claimed the officer had subdued her with use of minimum necessary force and that she was participating in a prohibited assembly. However, in an interview with local media, the mother of the girl said she was only passing by the area to buy paint for schoolwork with her brother. She said there was no justifiable reason to threaten her daughter in such a manner and she will file a lawsuit against the officers involved. Meanwhile, the girl told the media that she ran away because she was scared. She said she was on her way to meet with her family when the police suddenly approached her for no reason. Here's another video of a protester being dragged across the street by police. And might I add, these are not Hong Kong police. These are police from communist China. And the Chinese Communist Party can't work out why the whole world hates them at the moment. Jakarta, Indonesia. Indonesian police detained dozens of men in a raid on a gay party at a hotel in Jakarta. An official said, Yes, Jakarta police spokesman Yuzuri Yanis said nine people suspected of organising Saturday's party were arrested and 47 others who participated were released. The nine are being charged under a pornographic law which carries a maximum penalty of 15 years in prison and a fine, he said. Yana said the participants were all from the same community in Jakarta. Police are still investigating to determine if any other people were involved, he said. Homosexuality is not illegal in Indonesia, the world's most populous Muslim nation, except in some conservative provinces. However, the country's gay and lesbian community has recently come under siege. Police have set up special task force to investigate illegal homosexual activities. In February, members of the House of Representatives proposed a bill that would define homosexuality as deviant and require lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgenders people to report to authorities for rehabilitation. Don't know what that would involve, but anyway. The United Nations Human Rights Council has called on Indonesian authorities to release people detained in the basis of their sexual orientation and combat anti-gay stigma in the country. I really don't think Indonesia is a place you want to live if you're gay. Anyway, tell us what you think in the comments section below. China calls for code of conduct in the South China Sea with Asian countries. Hanoi, China calls for an early conclusion of talks on so-called code of conduct 
to avert a clash in the South China Sea, as strains between China and the United States over the water have been intensifying. By easing tensions with the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations in the Sea, China's president and leadership is believed to be attempting to curtail US influence over the waters, home to some of the world's busiest sea lanes, observers have said. China should finalise a code of conduct with Asian countries as soon as possible to create a set of rules that reflect the region's characteristics. Foreign Minister Wang Yi was quoted as saying, Beijing has conflicting territorial claims with Asian members Brunei, Malaysia, the Philippines and Vietnam, as well as Taiwan in the South China Sea, a strategic waterway through which more than one third of global trade passes. They also have conflicts with Japan and Korea in another sea, but that's another story. A code of conduct has long been discussed with China and Asian nations, agreeing in 2002 on a loose set of guidelines known as the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea. Beijing, meanwhile, has rapidly built artificial islands with military infrastructure on the sea, which is commonly known in China as salami slicing, a little bit at a time. And nobody notices. Wrong. This has forced the United States to defend these Asian countries against the Chinese aggression in the South China Seas, which nobody wants. In July, Washington said it is taking a tougher stance against Beijing's maritime assertiveness in the South China Sea, calling its claims to offshore resources across most of the contested waters completely unlawful. China is the only country out of all these Asian nations with interest in the South China Sea being aggressive. They seem to have this idea that they own the South China Seas and the rest of the Asian nations must accept this. They have built their navy up to force these Chinese claims on the smaller Southeast Asian nations. They have bullied the other Southeast Asian nations and now America has stepped in to defend them. And now the Chinese Communist Party wants a code of conduct, do they? Every conflict in the South China Sea has been started by the Chinese. There is only one way this code of conduct is going to end for China. And that is for China to stop bullying and invading its neighbours. For the first time in history, China is operating two carriers together in simultaneous training missions to refine attack tactics. The Chinese-backed Global Times said China's first carrier, the Liang, was spotted in the Yellow Sea and that China's second carrier, the Shandong, concurrently embarked upon a training voyage in the Boho Sea. Chinese carriers could squeeze the island of Taiwan from different angles in this context, the reports added. Alongside a dual carrier presence, China's DF-21D and DF-26 anti-chip ballistic missiles could deny possible US interventions. And the Chinese often refer to them as the aircraft carrier killers. They are land-based missiles that are fired at carriers from the Chinese mainland, which will in turn force the US military to attack China's mainland in retaliation. Not a good idea, China. Anyway, dual carrier attack operations extend the Navy's ability to hit inland targets to a larger extent. So tactical maritime advantages may no longer be restricted to the US, but may instead be part of China's growing effort to achieve parity, if not overmatched with the US. While current Chinese-Korea maneuvers may not yet parallel US power projections capabilities, there is a growing concern regarding China's speed of carrier construction, shipbuilding resources and overall fleet expansion. China is planning a massive 85-ton, 40-plus aircraft strong, high-tech carrier. The third carrier, identified as Type 002 carrier, 
is reported to have a displacement of 80,000 tonnes and be able to operate courier air wing of more than 40 fixed wing fighters, while conventionally powered as well, as opposed to US Navy's nuclear powered carriers. The Type 002 will greatly expand China's air attack range and of course, power projection capabilities in a truly global scale. Thailand enters space race, Air Force satellite launched. Yes, Thailand has entered the space race. The Royal Thai Air Force launched its first satellite into space. The satellite will be used for general data collecting as well as for security purposes to prevent foreign countries from spying on Thailand. The Nastalite Nat-1 was launched at the Guiana Space Center in French Guiana. The satellite will be at low Earth orbit, 500 kilometers above the Earth's surface. It will be used by the military to survey Thailand. It will collect data that would be helpful with the natural disaster relief efforts like monitoring water to provide data for flooding and drought management. It can also detect hotspots to prevent forest fires. A core mission of the security satellite is to prevent foreign countries from spying on Thailand, according to the head of the Space Operations Center. He reported the satellite will improve Thailand's space security. I didn't know Thailand was being invaded from outer space, but the Air Force doesn't intend to use the satellite for warfare or tracking specific individuals, it is to upgrade general security systems. And if there is an invasion from outer space, Thailand is fully prepared to fight them off. The US has become driver of militarization in South China Sea, claims a Chinese diplomat. Hong Kong, the Chinese government's senior diplomat, State Councillor Wang Yi, said on Wednesday the United States is directly intervening in territorial maritime disputes in the South China Sea due to its own political needs. It has become the biggest driver of militarization in the region, Wang said. He made the remarks in a video conferencing with Foreign Minister of the Asian Summit. Peace and stability is China's greatest strategic interest in the South China Sea. It is also the common strategic aspiration of China and Asian countries, Wang said in a statement posted on the Foreign Ministry website. Wang said China is willing to communicate, have dialogue with the United States in order to achieve cooperation. Last month, the United States blocked 24 Chinese companies targeting individuals it said were part of construction and militarization actions in the South China Sea. It's the first such sanction move against Beijing over the disputed strategic waterway. 